Hello everyone, good evening. I'm Chelsea Ola Miller and I am super excited to be here tonight with a guest that a lot of you probably know from her writing and her Facebook page. And she is Christy Lynn from Healing Through Grief with Christy Lynn. And um, tonight I'm just gonna call her Christy, but all of you probably know her as Christy Lynn. And so I would just like to say good evening everyone. If you have any questions, comments, things you wanna talk about, make sure you put them in the comment section and we will get to those throughout um, our discussion, but just welcome Christy. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your story and how we uh, got to collaborate, I guess. Yeah, thanks Chelsea. I'm happy to be here. Um, so yeah, for those of you who don't know me, because those who know probably have heard this over and over again. Um, when I was 19 in 2012, um, I lost my mom to cancer, metastatic melanoma. She was diagnosed seven months prior. I was a sophomore in college, um, so kind of a very difficult part in life to try to navigate a world without my mom. Um, was it was kind of expecting it over seven months, but I don't know if you're ever fully prepared or ready for that, no matter how much time you have. Um, so yeah, so at first I would never have thought in my life that I would ever do any writing or even anything in relation to what I've been doing. I actually got into writing from a totally different standpoint. Um, I went through a breakup, um, like a really messy, toxic relationship breakup. And I was then grieving that person, but also my mom so much more because it was this first like big, sad life event that she wasn't there for. Right. And in that, I was just like grasping onto any hobby I could find, anything I could do. and there was this website that I would always pop up on Facebook advertising, like write for us, like we'll publish anybody's writing. And I like started writing, not about my breakup, about my mom, just because I, that was what I knew best. And then I started writing about my breakup and I just started writing all over the place. And within a couple months, a post of mine, like got picked up by a lot of you probably follow um, the motherless daughters Facebook page that has like a million people on it. And they right. shared one of them and all, all of a sudden this, and went like crazy overnight. People I know are telling me they see it on their timeline, shared from somebody. And I'm like, wait, I, maybe I'm actually like decent at this. Yeah. So I kept writing and eventually just made my own page. And it became not only an outlet for me, but I actually was like pretty good at it. I was helping other people. It was just a very unexpected thing at a really dark time in my life that just turned into something I've kind of run with ever since. That was probably yeah. like, three or four years after my mom died. So it was a while. Um, and I definitely don't do it as much now because now I have to be an adult and work full time. Whereas when I was in college, I had a little more free time, um, but I still try to do it. And yeah, it's been super helpful for not only you guys, but me too. Yeah, well, and I wanna talk about that too because um, most of you probably don't know this, but um, Christy is a um, therapist for um, an oncology, like social worker, therapist. Well, I'm probably messing up your title, but um, I, I would love to talk to you about that because I feel like that's such a beautiful gift. Did you know before your mom's path and journey that this is what you wanted to do? Or did that come a little bit into your grief journey? Or tell me how you landed there because I would love to know it. And I also just think you would be the perfect person. If I, you know, thinking back to when my mom had cancer and you meet with all these nurses and these people that come in and most of them have never had this situation. And so they're super compassionate and kind, but you also know they've never sat in the chair that you're sitting in. And so I just think that you are probably just the biggest blessing to all of these people that you're sitting across from because you have been in their spot. And so tell us a little bit about that. Like, did you always know you wanted to do that or? Yeah. So I always knew I wanted to be like something in like the therapy talking for a living world. Um, <laughs> like when I was in college before my mom got sick, I was like between like a psych major and school counseling and things like that. I didn't even know social work existed at the time um, until my mom got sick. And I had a social worker that my mom convinced me to see at the hospital where she was getting treated. And, you know, I was probably 18 at the time when she was first diagnosed. And I was like, what, what is she going to do? Whatever. Well, she was awful and oh, gosh. literally had no idea how to talk to someone my age going through this. No idea how to relate or, I mean, 
she was, I mean, I guess uh, now years later, I can say, I guess she was doing the best that she could, but in at the time had no idea how to talk with me was tell, comparing it to her mom who died when she was like in her fifties and mm-hmm. like, couldn't understand, like that's Different. nowhere near comparable. And I remember sitting at the kitchen table with one of the hospice nurses one night and they were telling, she was telling me the story of how she lost her mom suddenly when she was around my age and we got to talking and I was telling her how awful the social worker was. And just like an aha moment in that moment, I said, that's what I'm going to do. And there's not going to be another family who's going to feel like someone can't relate to them. And somebody hasn't been on that other side of the chair and kind of just taken off from there. Like I didn't expect to get my first job um, out of school in oncology. And I did. Um, and I've just done it ever since, um, within the past year, COVID, um, having extra time, I started doing like on the side therapy and did totally just people who have either like lost a parent, um, or like breakups and toxic relationships, because everything that brought me here are those three things really. Right. And that's kind of just become my career. Yeah. I love it. I love it because, um, it's just, you know, it's a beautiful way to extend your mother's legacy and just make her, I mean, as a mom, I can only imagine that she is just the proudest person of the work that you're doing, both through your social work, your therapy and your writing, all of that combined. And you just have such a beautiful heart and you're inspiring so many. I mean, I'm a 39 year old woman from Indiana and your writing has resonated with me and inspired me on days where, you know, I'm in a dark place. And so that says a lot about you and the light that you provide for people. And I I hate that you had that experience, but I also kind of love it because it's, it led you to this and how many families are impacted by that one social worker who should have known grief is not comparable. And that, that should have been her number one foundation. Like it doesn't matter Even if you're sitting across from another woman your exact age at 19, your grief is not comparable. You know, your experiences are so different. Um, And so I am glad that you mentioned that. And it's a beautiful way that you got into what you're doing. So keep it up. Yeah. It's it's funny because I, I do think about that often. Like, of course, I would trade all of it for my mom to be here. But I do often think, like, what the hell would I be doing with my life had my mom been alive? Right. Because my entire career has just been in my adult life has just been based around that experience. And I yeah. think we can use it for some good, I suppose. Oh, it's beautiful. And I do want to ask because it's it's different for me. Like I said, you know, I was 34, 35, I think, when my mom passed away. She was 57. So you were much younger. Like you said, you're in college, you're going through all these other things. And I know you said you waited a couple of years to start writing, but as a you know woman in your 20s who if i think back to when i was in my 20s i was still you know confused about myself and the world and all those things so was it hard for you to put yourself out there or did it feel you know empowering to do that or can you tell me a little bit about you know how it felt to kind of put your heart and soul out for strangers yeah at first it was weird i will say but at first i did it thinking that no one would ever read it right so right I, i was the same I never like shared it on my personal Facebook. Like it was like, whatever happened, happened. I think I don't think I shared something on my personal page until like years into it. Like, but I remember when these posts started going viral and I would run into someone or someone would say like, oh my God, like somebody was, I was watching my coworker scroll through Facebook the other day and I saw your post on her timeline. And I'm just like, oh God, like people are seeing this everywhere. Right. <laughs> I meet someone at like, something I was doing like in like the motherless daughter world or the grief world. And they would be like, wait, are you the Christy who writes? And I would be like, uh-huh. Maybe. <laughs> like, and then I think you just get used to it. But like for a while it was really, really strange. And it was just because like, I always have been like, so like vulnerable where I've like written kind of like the not so like, I don't really sugarcoat it. Right. Like when things right. are terrible, like I'm writing about them being terrible. <laughs> right it was kind of weird because those are things I'm not having day-to-day conversations with. Like my friends hadn't lost parents, lost a mom. People in my life didn't really understand. So for the most part, like that was my outlet. So my friends were then reading it and being like, Oh my God, I had no idea she was feeling all of these things. Right. Maybe they, I don't know if that, you know, like, because I wasn't saying it to them, but it was just becoming like a public forum 
for so yes to answer your question it was weird at first but now i think i'm just really used to it yeah well and i love that you say you know you don't sugarcoat it because i feel like i'm the same way like if my grief is raw that day it's my writing is raw i don't plan my content like a lot of people will ask me and i don't know if you're the same way but i will wake up in the morning and something will remind me of something or something will happen and i'm like oh i gotta put this down on my you know notes on my phone or anywhere mm -hmm. and i even had somebody say the other day in the comment section like oh the last two days have been really you know serious can you give us a little bit of hope and i'm like i'm trying but this is right, where i, I am right now right now right you know and so i love that you also you know commit to like when it's hopeful i'm going to tell you that it's hopeful and when it's awful and i'm down on my knees crying i'm right. going to tell you that it's that too and so um it's, I know it can't be hard or I mean, it can be easy to do those things, you know, and always tell people where you are. But I that's another thing I admire about your writing is that it's real. You tell me how it is. You know, you tell everybody how it is. And um, it's both hopeful and full of the ache, which is grief, you know. Right. Right. And I think like like you said, I don't I mean, especially now, because now it's just like something I really do on the side because I'm so busy with other things. It's not often that I'm having a good day and I'm thinking like, well, I really want to write about this. Like the reality right. is like when you need to vent and when you need to express your emotions, it's probably when things are pretty crappy. Yep. And, but also like every now and then I'll have a moment. I am, I'm sure you've seen where I'll like tell like a really like positive, hopeful, I can't believe I've come so far. And this is why story. And right. Like, but it ha I feel like it's, one of those things that's either like really high or really low. I'm not just having yeah. an average normal day and thinking like, let me write about this because what is there to write about? Like things are okay today. Right. Exactly. It's, it's a mundane day. I don't have anything to say. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. So, and I, I love also that you're, you know, several years into your, you know, grief journey as well. Um, because it does show that like while grief never ends, it's a constant transformation of where it was to, you know, when it first started and how you grow and, you know, become the woman that you are while also carrying the grief that you had from, you know, years and years ago. So have you, what I guess would you say are the most transformative things that you've noticed on your grief journey or maybe even surprises that have come up? I think it's like at the beginning, which anybody who's at the beginning, like you feel like you're never, things are never going to get better. Like I remember, like I couldn't even walk down an aisle in the store without crying. Like I couldn't go through a day without crying. And it was like, your whole life is just like surrounded. But like, this is it. Like, I'm never going to be happy again. Like everyone's life is going on. Mine is not moving. And I think it's those moments where I realized like, number one, how it's been nine years is mind blowing to me. But like how it you do have bad days always i'm not sure those always go away i think milestones are always hard but like the day-to-day -day truly does get better and you truly do get used to a new normal and i think sometimes i do even surprise myself i like start to think like wow like i actually like haven't cried about this in a month like i never would have thought that that was a thing like do i have days where i'm sad yeah but like i'm not like my baseline isn't like devastated anymore you know like, right I think there's certain moments that are devastating because my mom isn't there, but the day to day is no longer like that. And I think that I try to at least like when I can share that with people as well, because I think especially at the beginning, like I don't even remember when it got better, you know, like yep. you're just like in survival mode. And then one day you wake up and it's like, oh my God, I haven't cried in three days. Right. And you don't know how, how you got there you just did. So right. people always ask me like, well, when did it get better? And I say like, you can't put a time frame on that. I genuinely don't know. Right. Um, it's a blur until it's not. And even when it's not like, you know, it's different for everybody. I think, right. Like I totally threw myself into other things that were also kind of like healing for me because I was doing things like in correlation to my mom and both like with writing with my career. And that helped me, I guess, focus my grief in a more positive way. Yeah. But I mean, everybody's different. Right. Yes. And, and like you said at the beginning, you know, when that first loss happens, whether, you know, most of our followers are, have also lost a mother or a parent or some even a significant other, um, you know, 
but that loss and that raw, just heaviness of grief. And it, for me, it just, all of a sudden the world didn't make sense. Like right. nothing made sense. Everything was confusing. I didn't know. I felt like I didn't know anything. Like I didn't know the purpose of life, you know, anymore without my mother. And I just feel like this confusion of like, okay, what am I supposed to do? What, what was I supposed to be doing before now? You know, why are those people over there acting like nothing has happened? You know, it was just this constant confusion. And I feel like for the first year, you know, I ended up getting pregnant. I got married three months. I mean, our wedding was planned. My mom didn't make it. Um, she passed in July. We, we got married in September. And then a few months after our wedding, we got um, pregnant. And so I just dove into that pregnancy. Like if I just concentrate on this blessing, I'm not going to think about everything else. And so for me, the second year was the hardest. Cause I was like, I can't run from this anymore. like, here's what it is. Um, but like you said, I don't remember when, but it was sometime in that the brand new of year three, I think for me was like, okay, like I can do this. I, it's getting not better, just different. It's not so raw. It's more like a scar, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think for me, you know, I'm at year four, you mentioned you're at year nine. I wonder looking in a year from now, if when you hit year 10, if that impacts you in some way, like a decade. I think it will. I, I found it to be, um, with like the new decade, like 2020 yep. and being like a new decade that my mom wasn't a part of kind of affected me more than I thought it would. Yep. And was like a very strange reality of like something that I never would have thought would have bothered me. So I can only imagine like when you hit a number like 10, like, so it'll be nine years in November. Um, so I guess next November you can ask me, but I yeah. imagine I'm going to feel like it's just like, that's so much time, you know, right. like in, in the scheme of life, like that's, that's crazy. And right. I don't know where 10, nine, what years went. I truly don't. Like I can see that I've accomplished things in, in that, but I don't know where nine years went. It certainly doesn't feel like nine years. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing too. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I say that all the time to like my husband or some of my friends, I'll say, well, in some ways it feels like my mom has been gone forever, you know, forever. Like she doesn't know this new person that I am today. She doesn't know, you know, my children who they are today. And she never even met my, you know, my youngest son. And so, but then I'm like, there are other days where I feel like I just saw her face and held her hand. Like, yeah, totally. do you, do you feel like it's yeah. both like it's yesterday and yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's just, and it's kind um, of a hard thing to try to articulate too, because I think s different days feel different, right? Some right. days it feels like it really has been forever and you are forgetting things that you can't remember anymore. And other days it feels like you can remember every detail of like those traumatic moments towards the end. And it's like, well, it couldn't be that long if I still can remember all of this so clearly, but right. Yeah, no, it's a very strange feeling. And I'm not sure that that part ever changes because nine years later, it still feels like that too. Yeah, I'm, I'm glancing over. If I'm looking over here, I'm looking at some of the comments that keep popping up. But um, Sam said, I just don't know how, I'll go back up to the, some of the other ones, but Sam just said, I just don't know how to help my children because I don't know how to help myself. Wow. I'm going to let Christy, the therapist, handle more of this because Kelsey, the mother, baby. Yeah, I, that it's so hard. I think um, yesterday when I talked to um, author um, Bethany Harvey, she mentioned and she writes about it in her book. But she said one of the best things that she did, and I agree, is to first. And it, this was hard for me. I did not do it at first. I hid my crying. I hid my emotion, not all the time, but for most of it, I hid it for my children. And then finally, my husband said, okay, first, honey, for anybody to get through this, you've got to show them it's okay to cry. You lost your mother. She's gone. Like, so if you're sad, tell them you're sad and say, I'm sad because I'm still trying to figure out how to live without my mother and how to go on, you know, and they don't need to see me on the ground freaking out, but it's important for them to see, okay, look, mom's sad. She's dealing with it. And then, you know what, we can still move past this, but we're for the day, you know? Um, and so I think my advice, and then I'll, I'll let Christy jump in, but would just be first and foremost, show them that grief is okay. And, um, 
you know, really just find something for them to honor whoever has passed, whether it be a grandparent. Um, and, you know, because they, their little minds just, they are resilient, but they also hurt and their little minds can figure out ways to release their energy sometimes when we can't. And so I would say, open that conversation, ask them, you know, how, how can we talk about this today? Or what would you like to do to honor? Or how can we work, you know, work through your sadness? Um, Christy, what do you think as more of the, that's just my, I am not a, I'm just a mother. Yeah, I, you have more experience that way, just like how I have more experience at my job from my life experience, you know? And I think right. I, I'll spin it in the, the version of a lot of my patients who have kids and they get diagnosed with cancer. We have the conversation of like, how am I supposed to tell them this? And, or I've been hiding this from them, but like, they know something's not right. And I always say, you, you don't hide anything, you know, like, like you said, of course, if you're a puddle on the floor, having a panic attack, okay, maybe you don't want to show your kids that. Right. But I think your kids, like kids know so much more than I think we give them credit for. And they mm -hmm. have so many, much more of an idea of when things are wrong. Like yeah. we think like, oh, they have, they don't understand. They do most of the time. And I think right. as much as you can share with them, like what's going on, how you're feeling, keep that person's memory alive. If they do have a memory of them and like allow them to have that space, I think to share how they're feeling and you open the door that you guys can all talk about it together and you guys can cry together. And like, not that it's a, you want to make it be like a normal thing for your kids to see you crying all the time. But I mean, you're human too. Like I remember feeling for the longest time, like, does my dad not cry? Mm -hmm. Because he would even like, as like much older, like he would not cry in front of me. And I remember the first time I saw him cry, I was like, Oh, okay. Like he's a real person too. But like, I was older, but like, I also was kind of like wanting him to show emotion because I wanted to see that, like, not that I wanted him to be hurting, but like, I knew he was. So like, we, why can't we share it with one another? Right. And I think being able to be to some level of authentic with your kids, regardless of how old they are and allow them to kind of know and understand and keep their memory, the person's memory alive, talk about them with your kids show them pictures, tell stories. I think it's also important. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also it's okay to say, like sometimes my daughter will ask, she's in fifth grade and sometimes she'll ask me a question and I'll be like, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how to help you right now, but we're let's go over here and we'll figure it out. And so I think that could kind of apply to, you know, if it happens suddenly or if you don't know how to work out what you're going through, it's okay to say, okay, look, none of us were expecting this. Um, this is hard and I'm not for sure how to move on yet. I know we're going to be fine because we love each other and we're going to be fine, but I don't really know what that looks like yet. And I don't really know what I'm feeling sometimes. And right now I'm feeling so many things at one time that I can't articulate to you how to work through your feelings yet. Cause I'm still stuck here, but I promise I'm here. Just tell me what you need. Like I'll tell you, Hey, I, I need a hug right now. Or I just need to go into my room for a few minutes or whatever you need, you know, and, and ensure that they do the same to you. You know, yeah. you're opening up that door. I think that they're comfortable to have feelings too. Like, right. You know, when kids feel like they can't cry in front of their parents, that's a, that's a whole nother issue. So I think when you, show them some level of like you're a human with feelings too. And sometimes it's just too much today that shows them that that's okay too. Right. And they don't have to pretend they're fine when they're not because right. there's going to be a lot more in life that happens that you, you it's okay to not be okay. That's my favorite. Line. Absolutely. Yep. And don't be afraid to seek out people, you know, like Christy or other therapists that, um, you know, specialize in grief for adults or grief for children. I know in Indiana, we have a wonderful, um, I think it's a nonprofit called Brooks Place that helps families deal with significant loss, whether it's a sibling or a parent. And so I'm sure there are a million other places wherever you guys are um, that would be worth looking into. And a lot of people, um, you know, sadly feel shame about reaching out for help. And I'm always super honest. I saw a counselor and she was wonderful and really helped me. Um, 
And so for a lot of people, that's the right step. It's not for everybody, but um, you know, it doesn't yeah. hurt to reach out. All my profession aside, I am a huge therapy advocate and I have been in therapy for years and years and years. Even if there was times that I was only going a couple times a year, I have always consistently kept that because I think having an outlet of somebody who's not your friend, not your family, yeah. not like just a person you can tell literally anything to who knows nobody in your life and knows like it's it's an incredible thing. Like yes. I hope I make my clients feel the way that I feel in therapy. Yeah. Because it is truly if you find the right match of someone, I think it's incredible. So yeah. Yeah. Therapy, well and I'm sure like that out there too. Like you mentioned in your state, we have those. Um right. there's always things out there you just have to look. And if anyone ever needs any help finding them or finding someone, I'm happy to help. Absolutely. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, it's just, I'm a huge advocate for therapy too, because it just felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulders, you know, and even just to, you know, talk about it like you, um, you know, I, like I said, I was much older, but I was in the same situation. My friends just didn't know that type of grief. And so it helped to just talk to somebody and say, sure. is this normal? Am I you know, yeah. how should I be feeling? And they're like, you should feel however you feel, you know? Yeah. So um, I'm going to try to look through these comments real quick to make sure we didn't miss anybody. Cause I haven't. Um, and so, yeah. So that the question from Sam was um, she lost her partner or they lost her partner of 21 years. Um, he died two weeks after being diagnosed. So similar to you in that it was extremely quick. Um, Number one, I just want to say that I am so honored that you're here and that you are sharing this intimate piece of your story. And we are just, you know, super humbled that you're here and trusting us with, you know, a piece of your story because that's super important. Um, I'm so and here. yeah, and you know, you will get through this. And, um, my heart is just breaking because, you know, when you know significant loss and you feel it in somebody else, you know, especially with you um, as an oncology therapist, I'm sure, you know, you have to develop a shield almost around your heart because right. how do you that? I mean, I guess that leads to another question as I'm scrolling through the rest of the comments. But um, how do you, Chrissy, you know, not take home all of that grief and all of that pain? Um, how, you know, what do you do? I will say um, it's definitely not for everyone. And I think something I realized really early on is that I was just super good at separating it. And I think that for me was because I already went through in my world, what was the worst in relation to cancer, right? So right. every now and then I do have a patient and family that obviously hits pretty close to home and I do take it home. But I would say the majority of them, I am able to separate. And honestly, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah. I, it's a gift. I it's always really is, a gift. It, is that I think because of what I've been through and that being the worst that I can help other people and keep their stuff separate from mine. Um, and I right. think it is just like some people can do that and some people can't. Like, I remember I did an internship when I was in college at a hospice agency and it was the first thing I was going to do to dip my toes in the water in this. And I remember like them interviewing me and the social worker pulling me aside after and saying like, are you sure you are okay with this? Like, this is like really close to home. Like, are, right. are you sure this is what you want to do? She's like, if you, if you want to like want it, it's yours. But like, I just want to make sure. And I was like, yeah, I think I can, I think so. And yeah. it was fine. I mean, of course, like there's days where I'm like, I have three of my young patients all dying and had like really emotional days with them. And I'm just like, you, it's heavy, right? And you have right. to have outlets and you have to have distractions. And I've always been really good at that, probably in a little unhealthy of a way right after my mom died of like emerging myself in everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm still like that. Like, I don't really do well with my time down. still. Yeah. Um, so that keeping yourself busy definitely helps. And knowing when you need to take a break. Like, I use my vacation time. I take time off all the time. Like, you have to have, you have to separate. Absolutely. Yeah. 
has there been any um, things on your grief journey that have like either books or anything that you recommend for families that are grieving of uh, that maybe have helped you provide hope or inspiration or um, anything that you share with people? Yeah. And I feel like the book motherless daughters is like a Bible for anyone who's lost their mom, but I don't remember who showed it to me, but ever like it was the, it was so healing for me. I should read it again because it's not fresh enough in my mind, but just like, I remember there were so many stories of other people in it and yep. so much young mother loss in it. And the author mm -hmm. had to have young mother loss, like even significantly younger than I was. And right. like, it was just like before, like I had no one to go to nowhere to go at that time. There weren't even like a lot of Facebook pages out there or like things like people weren't talking about grief in the same way that we are now, nine years ago. So right. that was like the one thing that was like, oh my God, like there are actually all these other people around the world who have like been through this. Yep. So, and so I actually interviewed Hope Edelman is I, the author of that. Incredible. Um, incredible. And I think that book is 20, I think she said 20 years I old, think, I think. Yeah. And it's got to be still like the go-to book I would tell everybody. Yeah. Yes. Especially it is for that, you know, young mother. Um, yeah. But yeah, and she has now, I think she's written maybe five to seven more yeah, books exactly. that are, you know, they revolve around grief and, um, you know, not just about motherless daughters, but about grief in general. Um, so Hope Edelman would definitely be an author to um, yes. look up. I remember um, it was a little bit into my blogging when I, my Facebook page kind of took off and I had gotten tagged in a post by her. And I like was like, oh my God, what? So I like thought I was like just reading it wrong. And it was like maybe like just a page about I, I don't know. So I clicked it and she had shared one of my um blog posts saying like a new generation of like a motherless daughter writer like wrote like this beautiful thing. And I remember being like, like what That's me. Mean? She's talking about me. And this was like the book that like helped me survive. Life, yeah. And the author is telling me that I'm a new generation of a writer like this. Like, oh, what? And then like we had a couple phone calls like, to talk about things a few times, like in relation to writing. And I was just like, this is crazy. Yeah. She like, is the most like giving of her time to people that are, you know, grieving. Incredible. Yeah. She's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad that um, I was going, I was, I'm so glad that you like have reached out to her because, and, and she reached out to you because um, I, I'm, I think she said it perfectly. You are like that younger new generation of what she didn't, like she even said, she didn't anticipate it to be anything that it was. And now it's like the Bible for, I mean, lack of a better word of, for people well, that are grieving. Bible, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's amazing. I love it. Well, and I just was yeah. so um, inspired by her humble nature and just, you know, I can't imagine the amount of letters that she has gotten from women and people all around the world that said, your words have actually changed my life, you yeah. know? So right. I mean, you think about, I'm sure the messages you get, like I, wow. people message us, like message me all the time. And like, we'll say things like there's been days you're writing has saved my life. And I'm like, what? Like, that's incredible because writing has probably saved mine. Yep. You know, like I think, the fact that you can do something that's so healing for yourself, which I'm sure she could probably say at the time was so healing for her, but also to be helping so many people Absolutely. all over the world is just is incredible. Absolutely. So um, before we wrap it up, I don't think um, we'll just say um, I've been reading and we can go back in and read them when we're done, but Crystal and Sam, thank you so much for being here and um, sharing a piece of your story and um, Debbie said that Saturday is her mom's birthday, um, but she passed in 2013 and she's still having trouble um, handling it. And I will say too that I've written about that a lot. Like the last three years on my mother's birthday, I've written about that because that is just birthdays. I think when your mom's gone is just, it's that weird thing, you know, it's cause that's your like, the reason that we're celebrating, you know, and it's her birthday, your birthday. And so, um, you know, I feel that pain. And I think you, you've you written about that a couple of times. So my mom died um, three days after my birthday. Okay. Um, 
so that's a really just like mess of a time <laughs> yep all around because it's like directly correlated um to like all of those memories of those awful days but also a day i'm yep. supposed to be happy but also like i wouldn't be having a birthday had it not been for her it's a very confusing time so yes i do write about that quite often So would you, I guess, like if somebody, you know, new is following your page and finding you, what would your, you know, advice or inspiration be of just, you know, your, your final words? What, what would you say to people? I would say find what's a positive outlet for you and do everything you can with that. Um, doesn't have to be one thing doesn't have to be something big doesn't have to be could be a bunch of small things but everybody needs outlets and i think to play therapist for a second self-care is something people are so poor at because we prioritize everyone over ourselves we have all of these obligations we work we have families like ourselves always come last and i'm such a huge advocate for like even if it's one thing a day of putting yourself first and doing something that you're the only one getting benefit out of like you'll feel your life change from that. Yep. And it's okay if that thing changes through the time. Like I know I hate it when people ask me the question, like, you know, and, which I probably ask people, but like, what has helped, you know, what, what's helped you the most or whatever. And I'm like, well, right now it's Pilates. But like, if you would have asked me in year one, it was naps, like right. naps and sleep and just getting away from the world, you know? And so it's okay if, you know, whatever that thing is that helps you recenter and focus is completely different, you know, it's six months. Every day. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, well, I will put all of Christy's um, links to her social media, um, her Instagram, her Facebook, her blog, everything is full of just inspiration, stories, um, raw truth telling. And I promise you, if you're not already following her, um, she's just a, a gem to follow, um, in this grief world. And, and, um, so thank you so much, Christy, for being here. I'm so glad we got to collaborate and hopefully we can do it again. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much, everybody. The video will be here. Um, if you didn't get a chance to watch it in its completion, it'll be here for you to view at a different time. And I will even have it up on my YouTube channel for those of you, um, it'll be ready tomorrow. So thank you so much everybody and have a good night. Thank you, bye.